You girls ready to come out? Here you go. Hey guys, welcome back. So today I am doing a bunch of very random things in the garden, but I figured I would take you guys along. I'm essentially getting ready for planting. So I'm going to be planting out a lot of my plants. I think we're like a week to a week and a half out. They are all hardened off fully at this point. I think I might actually plant snapdragon stakes. I do need to get those in the ground. But one thing I actually want to do is place out my seedlings where they are going to be in the garden. So then that way I can see what extras I have, what I might need to like start more of, um, see if there's any pockets in the garden I may be missing on my garden plans. Um, it just really helps me get a better visual when plants are in the space they are going to be living for the season and but I am gonna go ahead I think and move these seedlings in their areas I really need to weed today I hate weeding but we have multiple days of rain coming that's another reason why I think I want to plant the snapdragons today but we have multiple days of rain coming so I need to weed today I need to feed plants today I'm sure I need to do more than that. I will be doing a lot of direct sowing as well. So this is not all of the plants that will be in the garden space, but I will walk around and kind of explain everything to you uh, once I get everything in place. Man, it has gotten pretty sunny. It's supposed to be a pretty cloudy day, but one thing you may be able to tell at the moment is how shaded my in-ground space is compared to this above ground space. Um, it obviously changes throughout the day, but like this super, like midday extreme sun, that part tends to get a little bit shaded out. So I'm actually excited to see how the broccoli will do there this year, just because it's not gonna get like the super hot sun. And I think it'll do pretty well. But that's something to look for in your garden space is to see the shade patterns, what gets sun when. Obviously I try to do my best, but I do have limited space. So sometimes things get a little bit more shade than some other things. Like I've had tomatoes in my in-ground space for the last three years and they've done just fine. One thing I always tell someone that is starting their garden is to start watching the patterns of the sun in the area that they're wanting to grow. That way you can plant like your greens in a more shady area, your things like your tomatoes, onions, peppers, potatoes in a more sunny area. I am planting tomatoes in a handful of locations. I think I wanna start by placing them in their grow bag locations first. I made a video talking about how tomatoes are my probably least favorite thing to grow. I love homegrown tomatoes, but I'm not a big tomato eater when it comes to fresh tomatoes. I prefer to make tomato products, but I just, I don't care for the plants. It's not that like I hate tomatoes. I just don't really care for growing tomatoes. I don't really like the smell of them and they're just a little bit more finicky than some of the other things that I grow. You have to be a little bit more gentle with them the whole nine. I am really happy though with how my starts look this year. I'm really happy I waited the whole extra week I honestly feel like I could probably go one more week past the week I started them this year, just so they wouldn't be as big as they are, but they're a good size at the moment. We have a slight breeze that's making it just a little tricky for the tomatoes being placed. They're just tall enough where they wanna kind of flop over and I don't really want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you where everything is currently at and then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the tomatoes and finish where I left off. There's just a few things I'm not quite sure of and that's one reason why I like to do this because then that way it takes a lot of the guesswork out on planting day and you can get things going a lot easier planning is key. I do have all of this stuff planned out on my iPad, but it's different ones you get everything out here. So over here we have the broccoli, kill, cabbage, all of this stuff will start coming out 
June until July, and this will probably just actually stay blank. This little chunk right here gets really shaded out, and then I will go ahead and plant out some more fall stuff here, probably like in August. This is going to be sweet potatoes. I do have this area opened up at the moment. I don't know if I wanna put snapdragons right there, or if I want to put another round of lettuce. That's the thing I'm kind of debating on at the moment because I originally have my snapdragons planned for up there. I'm almost wondering if I want them over here. I'm not quite sure, but here's dahlias. I have poppies um, and then spinach. And then I have a bunch of Roma tomatoes over here, my elderberry, and then I have my indeterminate. So aroma tomato is a determinate plant, which is a bush. And then your San Morzano's, a lot of your cherry varieties are indeterminates, which will mean that they will keep growing to an indeterminate height. So they are on the end of the trellis this year. And this is going to be all green beans on both sides and then loofah at the very end again. And then we have tomato, 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 tomato uh six jalapeno plants and then we have all of my onions other lettuce garlic there's a whole plan for all of that but over here this bed right here is a bunch of um determinant tomatoes all determinant tomatoes and then this half is also determinant tomatoes and i currently have this half open which i could go ahead and plant out another round of peppers or i could plant Again, snapdragons right here. I'm like really unsure of where I'm gonna put all the snapdragons, but here are all of my pepper varieties outside of the jalapenos over here. So here's all of the other seedlings at the moment, which I do need to water a few of these. So this is lavender. Lavender is going all into the front garden space. Oregano is going to be going in different pockets, um, different planter bags like this. Then I have a bunch of other peppers. I have each pepper plant I did an extra for. So this is one of each pepper variety that I'm growing. And I'm either going to go ahead and plant these out or I'm going to up pot them into uh, five inch pots, let them continue to grow in my basement. And then once the garlic is out come like the first, second week of June, these would be planted. Um, and then I have some rosemary. Again, they're gonna go in some planters and then that's just some extra loofah I won't need. And then I have some hibiscus, which I think the hibiscus is gonna go up front here. And then I just have cosmos, zinnias, this is the stuff that really needs water. This is echinacea and then straw flower. The straw flower is looking really sad. I really need to get water on that. And then I have parsley, again, all those grow bags. Basils will, will go in between all of the tomatoes and then i actually have a second uh, succession of lettuce over here uh, this is hyssop which hyssop will all go in the front garden as well and then this is peppermint which will go into various planters around the garden don't be like me i literally just told you guys last week make sure your seedlings are watered before you bring them outside i brought them outside earlier and i was like oh i'll be outside in an hour or two they'll be fine till then they're very dry at the moment so i really need to get some water on a few of these seedlings and i also just put them in the shade that way they're not even more stressed out so i jumped inside so i could just cross reference a few things on my garden plans and kind of where i'm spacing a few things out so i am going to go ahead and plant snapdragons here they fit perfectly um, and I had them in two separate bunches in the front garden space but that just opens up to where if I want to direct so maybe like a few more flowers or zinnias or cosmos I think uh, that will work really well and again this fits so perfectly here I'm really excited to try uh, these snapdragons but I wanted to have different pockets of different flowers just around the gardening space and um, I originally had a few more tomato plants right here that ended up not working um, but that's where like secession sowing is coming into play when it comes to like the garlic the garlic will be out the first week of June as of like here in the next week or two I can go ahead and plant out some more tomatoes downstairs I can plant those out come the second week of June I can get a whole second wave of tomatoes so secession sowing really allows you to maximize your space to kind of see when things are harvested and uh, when you're expecting to plant something else so when I first started gardening I really thought that you plant planted things once and you harvested once but when you really get into gardening you realize how much you are doing both those things all the time so I did want to kind of talk about succession sewing and walk around and kind of discuss some of my succession sewing plans that way you can kind of get an idea of 
when things are in and out of the garden. I kind of discussed this a little bit on my garden tour, but I want to kind of give you an idea of when I'm starting certain things for the second round. We're currently in the first round of planting. I typically can get three separate waves in my space. So kind of let's just break this down. So for the most part, these peppers are going to be in the garden the entire season. A lot of my trellises will also be completely done once I plant them out. But things like the garlic, the onions, the lettuce, the carrots and various other things will be harvested and then I can plant out a second wave. This is how you're really able to maximize a smaller setting and grow even more food. So for instance, all of this garlic here, so all three or two and a half garden beds of garlic here will be harvested out the first to second week of June. So the plan for these three beds as of right now, because we can all see how my plans will change in an instant, but this is the idea. So this whole garden bed here is going to be all tomatoes. Over here, I'm gonna plant out some more flowers, and then I'm also going to do zucchini squash, and then I have my peppers over there that I told you guys about. Whatever I can't fit in the first round of planting, I will actually probably plant over here in this little strip, along with maybe a few more flowers. Then when all of the onions come out, this is the tricky part because these come out about the first to second week of July. And at that point, it's super, super hot. I can go ahead and get some more carrots planted at that point, but some of these spaces might stay empty for a few weeks as we transition into fall. So I've gotten a lot better about a lot of this over the years, but there's still times where I will go and have different gaps in my garden, depending on the time of year, to be honest. But the trellis, once it's planted out, will be planted for the entirety of the season. Most of the tomatoes will be planted out for the entirety of the season, but a lot of my tomatoes will come out come about the beginning to mid-August, and at that point, um, I can sow fall stuff in their place. So most of these areas in the garden will see two, maximum three different plantings for the season. Some of these spots that will only see one. For instance, the sweet potatoes will only be one. A lot of my tomatoes will only be one. Everything on this trellis, such as green beans and loofah, loofah takes forever. It's that, so you really just have to know what you're planting and the grow length of what you're planting. So, so one thing I like to do when it comes to planning for succession sowing is figure out my last average frost date and my first average frost date. Figure out the amount of days in between that and then kind of see or gauge when things will be planted and harvested out and then you can kind of see how many days after that you might be able to fit something else. So in past years, you will see, I try to succession sow a lot with green beans. I found green beans are just not something to try to plant out in the heat of the summer. I have failed miserably the last few years trying to do that. And then I was on my uh, extension office uh, website when it comes to planting and it literally states in there like you will have issues with uh, green beans if you're trying to plant them midsummer. So that's something I'm not going to be doing. But one thing I wanted to mention is is to have ideas of quick crops you can throw in. So there's a lot of different things that you can plant and they'll be completely ready at maturity within 60, 65 days. So a two month window. So like I was saying with the tomatoes, they could be out the first week of August to mid August. That still gives me plenty of time to plant something after it. And then, especially because when we're going into those fall months, we have things like cool weather crops, which are frost tolerant, which will give you even more time, but it's good to plan for that. There's a lot when it comes to succession sowing, needless to say, but some really quick crops you can have in your back pocket are green beans, all types of greens, lettuces, um, you got beets, radishes are also really fast. Zucchini squash is another like 60, 65 day or, and that's one reason why I don't plant it out initially. So when it comes to zucchini squash for me, vine borer is a problem. So if I don't plant it out until about midsummer, I have less of a problem when it comes to vine borer. So note that if you're around me, zucchini is probably one of the hardest things uh, for me to grow because of squash vine borer. Uh, the squash varieties I've had success with are squash uh, vine borer resistant. There are traps that I have never tried out, but this might be the year I try out the trap. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of just going on a little tangent there. So by the time I'm getting everything planted out, 
uh, for the summer season, I'm literally having to start more seeds for the midsummer season. And then come midsummer, I'm like exhausted when it comes to harvesting and planting and all of that. And I have to start preparing for fall if I want a fall garden. So you really have to think, gosh, like multiple months ahead when it comes to the garden. That way you can always be prepared going into the next season. And again, I really thought gardening was like you plant it and then you're done. And I slowly realized gardening is pretty much never over. Mine is like maybe like a four to eight week period for me during like the dead winter. Well, anyway, I should probably stop avoiding all of the weeds that have been waiting for me. This is going to take me a little chunk of time because there's a good amount of weeds starting to pop up in various places now that we're getting fully warm. Regardless, how much you plan will never matter when it comes to gardening because you can always change your plans. Things happen and you are forced to change your plans. I will do all of this planning and then completely change my mind when it comes to something like a volunteer plant being in my way of something I already plan to plant. It's nice to have a plan and to have an idea of things, but it's also really important to remember that no matter how hard you try, it's really hard to go by the plan at all times when it comes to gardening, at least in my opinion, you have to be very adaptive. All right, so I made the decision that I'm gonna go ahead and plant these dahlias today as well. I was gonna wait probably another week for these, but they're getting a little too big for their pots and I don't want them to be stressed out. I've heard dahlias can be a little finicky when it comes to their roots uh, being messed with. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put two T-posts at the end and I'm gonna trellis these using a trellis system called the Florida weave, which is when you just have like two posts on the ends and then you weave twine um, as they grow up. So this will be our easiest option probably. These things are so heavy, but a T-post driver like helps so much. The dahlia variety I have is one from Florette called Bee's Choice. It's a mixture of all different colors. So I'm really excited to see what ends up popping up. Oh my gosh, this thing is so awkward. where I'm already having issues finding gardening gloves. I really need to get a new pair this year. So with dahlias, I believe you can plant them about 12 to 18 inches apart. I'm going to get, keep them a little bit closer. I'm gonna keep them closer to that 12 mark. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. You can really see the root system on that going absolutely crazy. These definitely needed to get planted. I think I started these, I wanna say only eight weeks ago. I could be a bit wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure uh, it's what I did. Where is my yardstick? I wonder if I'll be able to fit one extra one here. I was kind of eyeballing them earlier and they're actually getting planted out a little bit closer than I kind of just eyeball it. It's one reason why I like to go ahead and measure things out because even though I think I'm pretty close, I can sometimes fit something extra. So one thing I'm going to do once I get all of these planted is go grab my pruners and I'm gonna prune off any of the leaves on the bottom 
that are touching the soil. I like to do this with all of my plants because when you're watering or say you get rain, um, that water can splash up from the soil. And then if there's any type of fungal or bacterial thing in your soil, um, that can cause an issue with your plants. So I personally like to make sure everything's off the ground. So we don't have a single low in our 14 day forecast under 50, which is really good to see. I'm just gonna go ahead and get the dahlias and the snapdragons planted today. And then what come end of next week, beginning of the following, I'll probably get majority of other stuff planted. The dahlias out of nowhere, like a week ago, really put on some growth. And I was like, mm, you guys are probably gonna get planted out a bit earlier than I was originally planting. All right, I do have extra room. Let me grab the other dahlias. Okay, right, so I have a paper towel here with some rubbing alcohol and I'm just cleaning my pruners real fast before I cut off these bottom leaves. So cleaning your pruners is important between going around to different things just to make sure you're not spreading disease or fungal problems and all of that. Say like you were pruning something off of a tomato, say you're pruning blight, the last thing you wanna do is keep going around with your pruners to other plants and then introducing that blight to other plants. So I'm just gonna chop off the last like three or four leaves. Anything that's touching the ground as we currently speak is gonna go ahead and get removed. Now I'm just gonna take my twine and go through and just weave all of my plants onto it for the first support. So when it comes to a weave, you're obviously going back and forth with your plants. Now I'm just gonna go back the other way. That way they can be supported on both sides. This is a really cheap way. You can trellis almost anything. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna go make sure that the strings are positioned in the spot I want them to be. Now I'm just gonna lightly mulch a little bit this area over here gets really, really dry in the summer. All right, now on to the snapdragons. So these can be planted on average between six to 12. I've read like nine to 10 is a good little indicator. So we're going toward the nine to 10. So we're just gonna jump right in. I'm gonna just kind of push any straw that is here a little bit out of the way. We do have some carrots planted here, which I am gonna go grab my carrots when I'm done with the snapdragons. And there's a few small areas I want to re-sow. There, like, there's like a carrot here missing, a carrot here missing. So I want to go ahead and get those sewn out. Whenever I'm planting anything, I always am like, oh, I wonder if it's gonna work out. I wonder if it's gonna turn out. I wonder how this season's gonna be. And you honestly just never know, but most of the time it ends up turning out great. But yeah, like I said earlier, we have rain on the way. We have a handful of cloudy days on the way. So this is gonna be a good time to get these few things planted. Whenever you have a nursery pot, definitely be as careful as you can when it comes to taking the plant out of the nursery pot. I can't tell you how many times, especially in the beginning, where I would have like half a root system. So you wanna kinda of just really press down on this bottom here and that will help everything come out a lot cleaner and easier. This variety of Snapdragon is called the Early Sunrise Potomac. 
it is very very beautiful think of colors of a sunrise and that is what these snapdragons look like i'm gonna be really curious to see how snapdragons do for me because we have really really extremely hot summers and i've read that with snapdragons in particular they will bloom a lot before the heat starts. And once the heat comes in, they kind of stop for a while, but then they rebound and bring on like a second show come fall. And if that's the case, I'll be really excited because zinnias tend to do really well for me in the case like that, but I don't have too many other flowers that will really just keep going. Cosmos are another one. All right, and now I'm just gonna mulch this with some extra straw. Just planting those two spots makes me super excited and it's just crazy how much the garden is really coming together right now. It makes me so happy. <laughs> All right, I got everything outside watered and I'm just now finishing up everything in here. This tray right here needed watered. I got all the plants in and I need to feed my plants tonight, which I think is the last thing I probably need to get done for the day. I need to check on how many eggs I got for the day, but I think that is summing, summing it up a little bit. I have a few less seedling trays to worry about now, but I'm definitely starting to get some seed starting cleanup I'm needing to get done. All right. Never mind. I knew that there was something I was forgetting, which is just filling up my big pots with a little bit more soil. So I got these big, nice pots at an estate auction. I have two of them. Let me uh, move this. So I got these nice, big planters, two of them, for $30. $30 for two of them. These types of pots typically go for a minimum of about $150 to $300, depending. This is either, I think it's cement. It could be like a ceramic cement combo because the interior is a little different but these are very nice pots and there was already some soil in them i have no idea what's in here but i am going to just use them for flowers so i just got some organic garden soil to top these with it's gonna take two full bags but it did I also got this really cute cement planter as well I think and it has a mum in it so I'll be curious to see what color it is hopefully I keep the mum alive because I don't know if I have ever kept a mum alive all right girlies you ready to go inside you ready to go in Come on, this way, this way, treat time. Treat time. There you go. All right, let's get your water refilled real fast. I should probably clean 
the inside of their coop while I'm at it. Considering the next handful of days, our weather might be all over the place. Okay, let's see how many eggs we got today. I swear the ongoing joke is anytime I film, we get four eggs. <sighs> well, it looks like my nesting box held up for a month. It looks like it broke in a separate plastic piece. They weren't even using that nest box, so that sucks. Good to know, either way. Looks like it's not a four egg day. We got six today. All right, just go ahead and take that out. That sucks. I was really hoping that that would all work. Aw, oh, I need to get a screwdriver. Of course, this thing was in the very last drawer I checked in my husband's toolbox. <laughs> Maybe I'll try to figure out another solution. I don't know, but they all use the one box. So it's not like it's really necessary. I also only have six chickens at the moment. And I think the rule of thumb is either one box per four. I could be wrong on that, but that was one reason why I had two when I had eight chickens, but they all lay in the same box and I haven't had an issue yet. So we'll just let it be for a little bit. One thing I've been really slacking in is getting a new compost system set up, which I really need to do for all of the chicken bedding. I think it's been like four weeks or so since I've had my compost system and I've had that for a few years. So it's really hard to get out of the habit of not composting while I've been trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. I probably should have had a better plan before taking it down but such is life. So finally on to the last thing I really wanted to get done today is to go through and feed my plants. I feel like after I feed today, I'm gonna have to buy some more of this. So I've been loving this Neptune's Harvest fish and seaweed fertilizer. I think I've talked about it every video since I started to use it. It has been amazing. So for the outdoor plants, we do an eighth of a cup per gallon. This is a fourth of a cup. So we have a lot of plants today. So let's mix up, we'll mix up four gallons. Oh say it smells absolutely terrible. I've been fertilizing some of my bigger plants downstairs and I'll go the next morning and turn my lights on. I'm like, whew, can, I can tell there was dead fish in this fertilizer, that's for sure. I will say this is the most consistent I've ever been with feeding my plants and everything outdoors here, um, it's been getting fed about every two weeks. Everything inside, is roughly about the same at the moment, which I think this stuff you can, every one to two weeks. So sometimes I've been averaging a little bit closer to 10, but for the most part, it's been two weeks. All right, I really need to find the backpacks part of this because this thing gets very heavy. So with this, um, I'm doing a spray because I'm doing a foliar feed. And what I do is I go around all the plants, I spray all of their greens and their bases. And what this does is it allows um, the plant to soak up through their leaves along with the soil. So say like you really don't need to water anything and you're using a granule fertilizer. That's been my problem in the past, especially with the garlic. And I think that's one reason why my garlic is doing so much better this year, because I was always granule feeding with either blood meal or bone meal and I wouldn't want to water because the garlic would be completely fine. And then that fertilizer wasn't actually getting seeped in. So um, big fan of liquid fertilizers, but I do like granules, but only when like before planting something. So obviously you're going to fertilize different than I am, depending on what your soil might need, what type of plants you have in your garden space. My onions and my garlic, everything I've read really gravitates towards something with nitrogen and phosphorus and low, if anything, in potassium. So when I was soil testing 
I was high in potassium in a handful of spots or pretty adequate in potassium. So I don't really want to add much potassium to my soil. Um, I am a little bit lower in nitrogen and then my phosphorus was either like okay or needed some. And again, so far I've really liked this mixture for most things in my garden. I measured some of this garlic earlier and we're sitting at over two feet tall. Well, not only does the backyard smell like dead fish at a lake marina, I'm pretty sure I do too, because the wind gusts would come through and then the mist would attack me. So pretty sure I also smell like dead fish, which isn't great. I'm gonna go take a shower, but that was everything I really wanted to knock out in the garden as of today. The next two days, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be able to get out here or not. Um, but yeah, hopefully it wasn't too boring. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.